Hey, it's Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today we have the Greer Lightspeed. All right, we got the Lightspeed from Greer Amps. Greer Amps was started by Nick Greer out of Athens, Georgia. This pedal is sort of a light, medium overdrive. It has its lineage based in the Tube Screamer as does many overdrive pedals. Uh, we have two op-amp stages. The first stage has some asymmetric soft clipping with diodes silicon diodes, and the second uh, op-amp stage has a little bit of gain and some tone shaping. And then we have a simple tone control at the output of the op-amp and then straight to the volume control. The circuit design has a much closer relative in the Timmy, Paul Cochran's Timmy pedal. Uh, and we're gonna look at those two schematics in a bit. First off, let's have a look at the pedal here. So this was their tie-dye version. It's just this uh, sort of color behind the Lightspeed logo. Controls are the same for all the Lightspeed pedals, as far as I know. We have loudness, which is volume, drive or gain, and frequency, which is your tone control. Input and output are side mounted. Usually I prefer to see top mounted jacks for a 125B or 1590N1 style enclosure, but uh, we do have a top mounted uh, nine volt jack, which is cool. Foot switch is a latching type. Feels like just a standard blue three pole double throw foot switch. The knobs, I recognize these knobs from the uh, Small Sound Big Sound Mini. That's where I have seen these knobs before, but they work well. They look nice and have good molding and grip so you can easily make adjustments. 9 volt jack is the Kobecon style. The enclosure itself, it looks like the enclosures you get from Tata. I don't know if that's actually where they get them from, but the I recognize the finish. That's what they look like when you get them from Tata Electronics. On the back here, we have some writing. I'm not sure if this is original. I did get this pedal used, but it's written 16419 up here, NWP. The front placard here appears to be a, uh, an acrylic, and I, I believe I can see paint on the bottom edge, which means that the acrylic just has the logo sort of cut out of the underside, and then they apply paint to the back in order to give you the color uh, and the white on black background that you see as logos on, on the top side. That's it for the exterior. Let's go ahead and crack open the pedal. All right, so we're inside of the Lightspeed pedal now. This, unfortunately, is one of those pedals that is famous for being gooped. Uh, in this case, the goop appears to just be hot glue, uh, and they've really gotten it everywhere inside here. It's, it's all over the circuit board, obviously. It's also holding down the uh, Fresno lens for the LED, which is a good thing, but it's kind of draping across the wires here. It's a little haphazard with the glue ap application. It's also questionable whether or not this would actually stop anyone, just the hot glue. Hot glue doesn't stick very well to stuff in general, uh, and usually you can just kind of pull it off. I'm not going to do that here because I intend to sell this pedal, but, uh, and also the, we already know what the circuit is, which actually calls into question whether or not gooping it is worth it anymore for rear ramps. But anyway, the circuit is gooped, and not only that, but hopefully you can see for some of the components down here, they're actually painted. Uh, so these are film caps, box film caps, these ones down here, and they uh, they have black paint applied on top of them. Uh, usually they will say the value of the capacitor uh, either on the top or on the side, but they've been completely painted, so can't see that. Uh, we can see, however, the op amp, which is a uh, Burr Brown OP2134, which is a high quality, expensive, low noise dual op amp. So that's a nice quality component, that's cool. We do have a couple of the Nichicon Gold electrolytics there, probably in the power supply. The quarter inch jacks are the Neutrik Rian um, open frame jacks. We have a stereo jack here for the input jack, and that's because they are switching the ground for the power supply on or off, depending on if you have your input jack connected. Uh, and that'll be true for the nine volt or for the, the barrel jack input for power. The wire that they're using here is solid core wire, so it's sort of bent into shape, which is nice and makes it look nice. The other uh, company that I've seen use wire like this is Keeley. Keeley does a similar thing with sort of 24 or 26 gauge solid core wire. Works fine, no problem. Some of the paint did end up on the wires here, so it's clear that they sort of assembled the pedal first and then painted some things. Um, that would have annoyed me when I was working on it, but it's probably one of those things that's not worth the time it would have taken to get some acetone or whatever and remove it from the wires. Uh, I'm just gonna try and pull up and kind of clean up this hot glue a little bit because it, it probably wouldn't cause an issue, but it does look a little ugly. Uh, and of course they do have space down here for your nine volt battery, so you can take your 
9 volt battery snap, connector battery, and then the cable just sort of sits inside there. Might have been nice to route this uh, battery snap cables underneath the PCB and just come up into the DC jack here. Would have made it a little hard to work on, so that's sort of an either or thing. So that's pretty much all there is to see for the circuit on the inside of the pedal. Uh, and yes, on the outside, this plastic piece, hopefully you can see that. What I would guess is it's a piece of acrylic that they paint black and then maybe like laser etch the logo and the words out. So you're, you're just getting rid of that black paint. And then they come in and apply white paint. And in the case for this tie-dye edition, you can see there, you can see there some of that, that tie-dye swirl. It looks hand painted on the inside there. I um, can't pull it all the way off because the LED bezel is holding that in with glue. All right, so that's about all there is to see for the inside of this pedal. Let's put this back together and then we'll have a look at the schematic for the light speed here and also for the Timmy and compare and see how they're similar or dissimilar. All right, I'm about to put the knobs back on this pedal and I wanted to take the chance to uh, show this cool, neat little tool that I bought recently. This is the Pepper Pedals Better, Pepper Pedals, oh my God. Pepper Pedals Better Setter, Pepper Pedals Better Setter. Uh, and it is a neat little tool for getting the knobs correctly positioned so that the dot is pointing straight up at 50%. For sometimes hyper anal people like myself, this can be a problem of great anxiety. And so having this little tool, which basically the idea is this fits around the shaft of the potentiometer and you bring in this piece, which butts right up against the side of the enclosure, holding everything down and in place, you can come in here and tighten this set screw. And now these two white lines will show you where you have to line up the dot for the potentiometer. And that will give you the 12 o'clock is 50% position. So we'll do the drive pedal here since I've already got it lined up. It's a little bit fiddly at first because you sort of have to hold everything in place and you want to make sure to turn your potentiometer all the way down or all the way up depending on which line you're using for reference. Take your potentiometer, drop it on top, push it down on the potentiometer, not too hard because you don't want it to rub on the nut and then tighten your set screw and then just slide the tool out. And now theoretically it should be perfectly Positioned. I can see that this one is not, uh, and that's probably because I'm, I can't look straight down because the camera's in the way. Uh, so I'll fix that one later, but that's the idea is you can use this and then you just flip the tool over because it's sort of double-sided the way they 3D printed this stop block here. You flip it over and you can use it for this side as well. Uh, that would be if the knobs are equidistant from each side, which apparently they're not. So we'll set that back here like that. Now, if for some reason you couldn't get, you couldn't flip it over like this, what you can do is you can just pull this thing out and flip it like that. And now you can have the knob pointed up. Like let's say this would have interfered with an input jack or something, whatever. So then you just set it in place, turn the knob all the way down, put the knob on. I'm gonna use, take it off screen for a second so that I can actually get it lined up. Tighten it down, slide the tool out, and now it should be pretty perfect. I can't tell that it's off with, I'm with my eye, so that's, what I'm set at. And now, as, about, as good as I can get it, this position should be 50% of the potentiometer rotation. And then, of course, like a jerk, I always forget to do the small inside one first. So we'll do this one now. Let's actually take this tool, pop it on here. Anyway, you get the idea. So this is the Pepper Pedals Better Setter. Pepper Pedals Better Setter. Uh, I picked it up from Love My Switches, I think. Um, so shout out to them, neat little tool. All right, I got the schematic here for the Greer Lightspeed and for the Paul Cochran Timmy. This is the version three Timmy. These schematics are from Pedal PCB. Pedal PCB makes PCBs for both of these pedals. The Greer Lightspeed is called the Mach 1 Overdrive and the Paul Cochran Timmy version three is called the Tommy three. So I appreciate Pedal PCB drawing up these schematics. If you wanna build either of these pedals, go check out the Mach 1 Overdrive or the Tommy three PCBs from pedalpcb.com. All right, so we're just gonna have a quick look at these schematics. So this is the light speed 
Uh, you'll see that there's similarities between these two pedals, and we'll go over that a little bit. So we have our input coming from the switch, one meg pull-down resistor for the input cap, which is a 47 nanofarad cap, 430K resistor, giving our bias to our op amp. This is that Burr Brown OPA 2134, nice quality op amp. Inside the feedback loop of the op amp, we have a little 100 picofarad capacitor. We have our clipping diodes, and this is symmetric clipping, so you'll see we have a string of three 1N914, which is the same as 1N4148. Silicon diode, about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volt, 4 voltage. String of three of them going one polarity and then string of two going the other polarity. A drive pot of a 500K audio drive pot and then a 5.6K resistor here in the feedback loop. And then coming off, we have tone shaping filters, 3.3K and then sort of two legs coming off of that, a 470 nanofarad with a 12K that's gonna limit the current through that capacitor and then a 47 nanofarad, both of these are connected to the reference voltage, which is the half voltage here from the power supply. 5.6K resistor coming out of the first op amp stage, 10 nanofarad capped ground, and then a second op amp stage here with a little bit of gain, a little bit of tone shaping here with the 3.9 to the reference voltage. One microfarad cap out of the op amp stage, 3.3K resistor, and then into our tone control, which is just a variable resistor to ground through a 220 nanofarad capacitor, and then out of that to our volume control. If we compare that to the Tommy or the Timmy, we have our same input, same pull down resistor, pretty close value on input cap, one meg bias resistor here, extra resistor here going into the first op amp. The op amp choice is different. This is a 1458, probably doesn't make a difference, especially in this circuit where we're not getting any op amp clipping. And then coming up to our feedback loop, we have the same 100 picofarad cap. Here we have Symmetric clipping by default, but if you hit the switch here, this will short out the second diode so you get asymmetric clipping. A similar 500K audio gain pot with a 3.3K resistor connected to the wiper, which is gonna affect the sweep of the pot. And then coming out of here, we have uh, two resistors, a 360 and a 3.3K. When you hit this switch here, it's gonna bring this, these resistors in parallel, which is going to bring down the resistance value. And then we have our two capacitors, the 39 nanofarad, to the reference voltage and then the base control, which is a variable resistor through an 820 nanofarad cap. So you can sort of think of the light speaker as having a fixed base control. So instead of having a variable control with a reverse log 50K pot for base, like on the Timmy, it's just permanently set to 12K through a 470 nanofarad cap. And then they both have just a separate cap to, to the reference voltage there. Coming out of the op amp here on the Timmy, is your treble control, which is just an inline potentiometer with a 2.2K across the wiper to the output of the op amp. And then a cap to ground, 3.3K, so a little bit of gain here, a little bit of tone shaping as well with the capacitor. Out of that, through a capacitor, we have one nanofarad for the light speed, 820 nanofarad for the Timmy. And then a audio 100K volume control with a little, another resistor off the wiper. So I think it's reasonable to call the Lightspeed a modified Timmy. They definitely share the, the structure, the bones of the pedal are quite similar. Uh, and you could you could sort of call a Lightspeed like a tweaked Timmy with a fixed bass control, sort of getting a specific sound that the designer wanted out of a Timmy and then put that into a pedal. I think that's reasonable to say looking at the two schematics here. All right, I hope you enjoyed the teardown of the Greer Lightspeed. If you have any questions or recommendations for a pedal you wanna see on a future teardown episode, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing and hit the notification bell if you wanna know when I make a new video. I'm Joe from Great Bench Electronics. Thanks for watching.